the young people, about 8,000 members, and we serve about 30,000 people a year. Um, so we're just really excited to be um, a part of this, um, this event here um, to really bring um, uh, the China light on a true um, gem and treasure in our community, Chef, you know, Chef Cloudy. So um, with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Betty. Um, just a big shout out to all, all of you in Zoom land. Happy to be here with you. Thank you so much, Brian. And uh, we are also now officially uh, streaming this on Facebook Live. Uh, so we have other folks that maybe couldn't get into Twitter, the Zoom joining us on, on uh, Facebook Live. And this is being recorded for everyone to, to come back to and keep cooking this delicious dish over and over. <laughs> uh, Chef Claudie, uh, we are ready for you. But before I hand it to you, I love seeing the Haitian heritage being celebrated. I did want to share with everyone that it is Haitian Hold Heritage already. Month. Um, and Cloudy, growing up in a busy Haitian American household in Brooklyn, New York, uh, cooking became Chef Cloudy's escape as he would help his mother and his grandmother create island infused healthy meals for their large family. By the age of 10, Chef Cloudy had developed skills to prepare dishes for his parents and eight siblings with little to no directive. And despite being a shy kid, you wouldn't know that from looking at him right now, uh, despite being a shy kid, he demonstrated a knack for hospitality and entertainment. In Pittsburgh, you might know uh, Chef Cloudy best for his amazing catering uh, uh, business, his work at Arnold C and his community work, really addressing food security and nutrition, especially in this moment. With that, uh, Chef Cloudy, all you. What's up, everybody? What's up, what's up, what's up? <laughs> I had to show you guys some dance moves real quick. You know what I mean? It's Haitian Heritage Month. Thank you so much, Betty. Thank you, World Affairs Council Pittsburgh. Thank you, Pump. Um, we are pumped up to, to do this cooking demo. Um, I'm excited, man. I, I really am. Thank you for allowing me and my team. We got a nice little team here together. So shout out to them. And shout out to you out there that's going to be doing this recipe. Um, it's pretty easy. This is a staple. We are uh, in the Haitian household. We literally eat rice and beans almost every day. And we do it with stewed chicken or stewed fish, stewed beef. I mean, everything stewed. Um, we also use a lot of fresh herbs. We use a lot of uh, lemon. We use a lot of different things. Um, if you want, you could pan into some of the crazy ingredients that us in the Haitian household tends to do. A lot of fresh herbs here with this little herb garden. I got a little bit of basil, thyme, sage. Um, we use all these crazy fresh ingredients and you can see some of the fresh ingredients that we have here. So this is just a snapshot of some of the things that we're doing. I want to go over with you guys just a little bit. Um, like Betty said, my name is Chef Claudie. Um, I'm here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania from Brooklyn, New York City. Lived in Jersey for a while and um, I'm excited. You know, I went to Pitt. I went to Le Cordon Bleu before Pitt. I graduated. So this is just a little bit of a really heartfelt recipe that is easy to do. It's a chicken recipe. If you want, at some point, you could change the protein. A lot of the same techniques will translate to fish will translate, I know there's some people that do tofu. It's a little bit more delicate, but it has the same thought process behind using the fresh herbs and using the different things. First thing I wanna get into is safety and sanitation. What we do is we make sure like, um, no matter what, we have our rags here, we have a clean cutting board, we have our knife and we have a sanitation bucket ready to rock and roll. Whenever you cut something on your cutting board, you gotta wipe it, real, wipe it down and then make sure that you, you put new product on. Um, next thing you know is you have a nice sharp knife. The thing with a knife is this. The biggest thing is when you're looking at your knife, you have to make sure it's nice and sharp because the harder it is to cut through. When you're working with a hammer, the harder it is to cut, the easier it is to chop your fingers off. And trust me, you don't want that. I've done it before. I chopped off a, a piece of my thumb. And I was talking smack and I was just like, you know, like, yeah, you know, I'm the man, da, da, da. Boom, my thumb was still on the cutting board and it was horrible. So don't do that. We don't want that. We want you to have a good time. This will be the point right now. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds. Go grab a glass of wine. Go grab your favorite beer, your craft beer. Go grab your cup of sparkling cider if you don't drink and make this a fun activity. Bring the family in and let's do it together. You know what I mean? So go ahead and do that. 
while you're doing that, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the things that we're going to do. One of the things that you'll see in the recipe list that we have is we, um, the recipe list should have uh, about a pound of chicken, a half an onion diced, uh, two teaspoons of minced garlic, a tablespoon of lime juice, uh, four sprays of fr fresh thyme, uh, fresh parsley, scotch bonnet pepper, um, black pepper, red pepper julienne, that's red, um, um, that's almost like uh, bell pepper, um, uh, Maggie chicken bouillon cubes, and teaspoon of adobo all seasoning, uh, white vinegar, tomato paste. So I made my own seasoning here, which I can't tell you the secret instead of using adobo, but I love adobo. So anybody that knows that, however, sometimes the MSG, sometimes depending on the right one, the blend, I, I, I'm trying to reduce the salt content. One of my sponsors, I'm actually a spokesman for American Heart Association. So don't use as much salt and we're not gonna use as much chicken um, bouillon. We're gonna make this healthy too. We're gonna make this a healthy heart meal. So I made my own seasoning. I used a little bit of garlic, uh, onion powder. Um, I used fresh cracked black pepper, salt. Um, I used a couple of other things, but that's that's a conversation that we can have on the side. You guys, you know, you, you asking for too much. And as you guys can see, one of the things that it didn't really talk about is Ipis. Ipis is a Haitian form of marinade that we do. We don't play no games with this. We actually take the time directly off of the plant. We take the herbs straight off, just like this, and we have it from the plant, okay? We're going to take our pesi or pet parsley, as you guys call it, and we literally, we literally chop it up fine, coarse chop it like this. One of the things we talked about with safety is this. I want you to hold your knife up like this. Hold your knife up. If you hold your knife like this, a lot of people hold their knife like this, you are 1,000% wrong. So don't do that, okay? That's 1,000% the wrong way to put your hand. If you hold your knife like this, like, yeah, I'm strong. I'm gonna, ah, ah, ah. No, absolutely wrong as well. 2,000% wrong. You don't have control. When you're in a kitchen, the number one thing you want to talk about is control. You control the temperatures. You control water heat or cool. how cool. You control your knife skills and your knife cuts. You control your temperament because something always goes wrong in the kitchen or there's always an opportunity in the kitchen. So make sure you keep calm. You have that little glass of wine. Sometimes we even put some in the food and you just relax and control everything about you, everything around you, okay? Back to the herbs. We take the herbs, we nicely, you take your fingers like this, index finger and your thumb, you grip the bottom of the blade, the actual bottom of the blade. It's gonna feel uncomfortable, but guess what? Keep going. And the more you practice, and you literally use a rocking motion. When you use this rocking motion, you don't necessarily have to come off of the board, but that's how you get faster and faster. And you'll see how much control you have of the knife at that point, okay? So please practice this at home, and this is being recorded, so we'll be able to redo this again, okay? So you take it, Feet shoulder width apart, and you literally, you practice it just like that. Nice coarse chop, okay? Now, we took some of the vinegar. We take um, a lot of the herbs and the things that we told you that you need to have. And now we're taking it. We take a little bit of scallions or green onion. You know what I mean? We clean it up a little bit like this. If I'm going too fast, guys, I'm sorry. We only got a couple of minutes, and this is supposed to go fast. Most of your prep should be done before you start the recipe. So that's why I'm doing it like this, okay? But you take your scallions and you cut it all the way through. The same way I told you how to hold the knife, you wanna make sure you get the whole entire scallion as best as you can, minus that little piece at the bottom. And let's put it together like this, okay? We're gonna take some fresh garlic. Ooh, I love garlic. When they say two cloves, I actually put 22 cloves. That's how Haitians do. That's, um, that's just good. It'll give you a little bit of hot breath, but at the end of the day, it's really good for you and it tastes phenomenal. So, oh well, you know, just brush your teeth a little extra this time, okay? Now you take the garlic as well. I like to give it a fresh, take the flat side of your knife. I like to give it a, a little squeeze. You hear that? I like to give it a little squeeze. You get the garlic already growing. And then we're just doing a coarse chop. You don't have to mince it all crazy, but once again, you hold your knife, you pinch the bottom, wrap it around, like this, and you do the claw, like we call it the claw. The knife should never pass your knuckles. You shouldn't be like this, 
You shouldn't be because guess what? You start chopping now and you're like this, bam, you just chopped your fingers off. We don't want that. Don't chop your fingers off. Hashtag don't chop your fingers off, right? Boom. You do the claw, the knife never passes it. You go this way like so, okay? A nice coarse chop because what are we doing? We're gonna, this is all to marinate this chicken. You know what I mean? So boom, voila, we put it all together. We take some of the peppers. The only thing we're not gonna use in this pepper is this little green part right here. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna cut it and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go all the way halfway through. We created a flat surface for it. And listen, if you don't have scotch bonnet peppers, they're actually really hard to find in Pittsburgh. You can find them at a lot of the, uh, the stores, the, the multicultural stores, the African store, the Asian stores. Um, so th that's where you would find it. And we're just cutting it and we're putting it in here like this. I'm gonna take also some jalapeno. Mmm, give it some nice kick. Same thing. I'm gonna cut it right in half. We create a flat surface just like this. That way it's not rolling around and voila. Okay, only piece we don't use is that one. We're gonna do it again, ready? And just remember with these, with these peppers, well, the ones that are hot, the only part in it that's really hot is the seed. So keep the seed if you want it to be hot, de-seed it or take the seed out if you don't want it to be hot, okay? So what I'm doing right now is I'm actually gonna take it and I'm gonna put all this into my food processor. Voila, like so. What that does is it allows everything to be blended together. Really nice and tasty. I have a lime here. I'm gonna add a little bit of lime juice, okay? That'll brighten it right up. That'll wake it up, give it a nice little pop. Are you guys still following me? Yes, this gives it a it. nice. <laughs> <laughs> this gives it a nice pop, okay? And then I'm gonna put a little bit of a touch of vinegar in it too. Now, one thing I didn't show you guys is, for the sake of time, uh, what I did is I actually marinated and cleaned the chicken. So the Haitian method, I know there's a debate: do you wash your chicken or not? We already took the chicken out, rinsed it off and marinate it in what we call shooting and, and, and have a first layer of, of flavors added to that chicken. What we do with that is it allows it to marinate overnight. We can actually do this marinade, but because I wanted you guys to see it, I wanted to do it with you guys. You take this marinade, then you pour it all over the chicken. All right, guys? So you guys, are, as you catch up and you guys are, are continuing the cut, This is about to be a marinade. And what you can do is you actually jar it. This is called ifi. This is flavorful. You can marinate chicken, fish, whatever the case may be with it. And we also use it almost like, uh, almost like a, a, a dip if you wanted to, because it's all fresh ingredients in here. And you could, almost like a gremolata or something, you could just drizzle it all over and cascade it all over your, your protein and it's delicious. You could do it, especially with your vegetarian vegan options. This is phenomenal. And you've seen all the ingredients that we put in it. So that's what makes it so beautiful. While we're here, I want you guys to get a view of the beautiful Pittsburgh PA. Check that out, man, oh man, that's where we are. We're at the EIC, shout out to the EIC um, kitchen. What up everybody, shout out to um, Gateway, shout out to Poise Foundation, everybody that allows us to really do what we're doing. Shout out to the EAT initiative where we're doing um, healthy meals um, for the entire city um, throughout the week, all right? So back to our it piece. Our it piece, now what we do is we take the it piece. Oh my gosh, the smell just slapped the mess out of me. Okay, guys, boom, look at that. Look at this. This is ridiculous. Look at this, y'all. All right, so Claudia, now- Claudia, that looks amazing. Uh, some folks are asking a quick question. How do they substitute for a food processor? Blender. If you have, everybody should have a blender. If okay. you don't have a blender, just chop it and put it on it. I mean, it doesn't do the same. It doesn't have the same effect, but you let it marinate. Look at this, guys. Oh my gosh. 
Now, and the liquid well, we just, marinade is oil or vinegar or water. It's another yes, fish it's, coming in. Okay, well, we put it in there. It's, there's a little bit, of a touch of vinegar, the lime juice, and then some fresh extra virgin olive oil. You can use avocado oil if you have it. You see this? Beautiful. You guys see what we're doing right here? This is how you marinate food. You don't just put salt and pepper. I know that we, some of us don't understand this concept, but this is marination right here. This is what makes you want to slap somebody when you taste it. Not really slap somebody. We're not encouraging any violence, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean, guys? This is marination right here. This is how you let it sit. And when that gets into that, down to the bone, it's finger licking good. You hear me? Finger. Finger licking good. That's how you get down. All right? So now that the chicken is marinating, you let it marinate for about 24 hours. I say, if it's like this, you could do it for a couple of hours, pop it back into the refrigerator, and that's the best thing. Now, what we're gonna do is get our cutting board all squared away. We got our sanitation rag right here, okay? That, now that your chicken is marinating, okay? Okay, okay. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go right ahead and get our entire garnish ready. The garnish is gonna be onions, a little bit of pepper. We could do some garlic if you will as well. What I'm doing is I'm prepping you guys because at the end of the day, we have to make sure it looks pretty too. And if you're anywhere from the islands, you know you need some fresh onion on top of the onion and garlic that's in the meal already. So you wanna make sure you have all your garnish ready to rock and roll. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our garnish right here in this dish. So get some more onion, guys. Get it all squared away. At this point, if you want, you can be making sure that your chicken is marinated. I know I'm going a little bit fast. Make sure that you have all your additional ingredients. Make sure. Um, and now grab the pan, because I already have my pan and everything ready to rock and roll. We're going to put the chicken on, and then we're going to show you exactly how to brown it at this point. Okay, we're gonna take a couple of garlic. Remember that? Bam, with the flat side. We did that as well. Hey, Claudie. Yes. Would it be possible to do a, a, a pause and a recap? We, we did have one request. I know you said we're going fast <laughs> by design, <laughs> uh, but we did have one request for, for a little bit of a slower pace. And I just wanna also let everyone know we're not marinating it overnight over here. Sorry, Claudia. No, we're not. We're we're not. You, don't right away. <laughs> you don't have to do it authentic. And actually I'm buying time right now for you guys while I'm doing this, because when I'm done, you guys are still gonna be able to go on at home. You know what I mean? So tough luck, try to keep up. You know what I mean? I could be crazy like Chef Gordon Ramsay at, at times too, but no, I'm joking. But no, try to keep up as best as you can, but you don't have to be exactly how I'm doing it. I've been doing this for almost two decades. So we do have a time constraint. We wanna get questions in, we wanna get everything the way we wanted to see it, um, to have it done. So I am gonna um, continue to move quick, pretty quickly, but as we're doing some stuff, when we're browning the chicken, I think that'd be a good opportunity for some folks to, uh, to be able to really uh, catch up as well. But um, any, any other uh, questions besides trying to move a little slower? <laughs> In that marinade, I did wanna say this, Sprinkle a little salt pepper in there as well. So my little marinade mix right here. You see that? You put your seasoning on it. You sprinkle it like snow. Sprinkle it like snow. Okay. Why we do it like that is because we want to make sure that not only does it have all the herbs and the spices that we like, but that it also has the right amount of seasoning as far as salt. And salt is a flavor enhancer. Some people don't know that. It's not to give it flavor. Salt is to enhance the flavors that are already there. That's why you don't cover it in complete salt. And that's why some people put salt at the very end um, because, and so sprinkle it like snow. Don't just take the bottle and shake it like this. Sprinkle it like snow, okay? About uh, about three nice uh, tablespoons. 
Okay, one thing I will say is this. A lot of times when we're cooking, it shouldn't be stressful. If you notice, everything is already set up in front of you. So calm down. I'm going to give you guys a second. If you're catching up, catch up. Um, one thing, cooking is supposed to be fun. You bring your family in, you bring your, your friends in, and don't kill yourself because cooking is to eat, is to consume. You do not want it to be stressful. So at this point, take another sip of your wine, catch up if you're cooking. Um, hopefully everybody's there. And then clean as you go. Like I said, you know, you want to make sure everything is on point. Hopefully you guys are catching up pretty good. And if not, you might have to rewind when we're done. But we're ready probably at the 20 minute mark. You know what I mean? So we still have a couple of pieces, uh, um, steps of the technique to go through. So I do want to keep moving forward. Um, other than that, let's go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk over to the, um, the, the oven area and I'm going to show you guys how to brown the chicken. So you guys got about 60 seconds while I set up over there. Walk with me, cameraman. All right. right back. Oh, you stay right there. Welcome back, guys. I hope you guys caught up. What's up? What's up? What's up? Now we got our pan here. I prefer to use a cast iron skillet. Most people may or may not have that. Right now, we're just going to use a, a pretty standard big saute pan. Um, as you can see, I let it heat up a little bit. We want the heat to be medium high heat. Um, and then we're going to add, we're going to add a little bit of, of that extra virgin olive oil to it. You can use different kinds of oils as well. Make sure it's nice and hot. And we're gonna start to add the chicken. You hear that? They call it a thundering roar. Oh my gosh, if you smell that, you wanna, oh man. That it piece alone, with everything that it has on it, the it piece actually is browning in there already, okay? You see that? As that is heating up, you can see the flavors. You can smell it. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Ah. I would bring the tomato product, the tomato paste nearby. So that way we can do it. I'm gonna change my gloves, guys. I'll be right back since we've been handling some raw meat. I'll be right back.
Huh? We're going to do a little sharing here of what the chicken is looking like on our end. Not quite as marinated as Chef Cloudy's, but it will be delicious nonetheless. And we have some veggies ready to be thrown in as well. Keep those questions and comments and sharing coming, whether you're watching on Facebook or uh, via Zoom. Thanks, everyone. At this point, guys, you guys should be taking another sip of your wine. All right. Do you see that? Starting to get already a little bit of color. You're giving it color. Cool out. All right. Now what I'm gonna do is little by little, I'm gonna add a little bit of tomato product. Get your uh, tomato paste in there. All right, guys. You don't have to add it all at the same time. For the sake of for the sake of time, I'm actually doing it pretty quick. But you can see what's happening right now. You can see. Anybody can see. Stevie Wonder can see what's happening right now. Between that it piece and that tomato paste, you now have almost a sauce forming, and the chicken is getting the color that proper color and i'm still at medium high heat so just be careful y'all because this is not for amateurs right here y'all look what's happening look what's happening in that delicious goodness is happening that's what's happening make you want to slap somebody it's happening right now not really slap somebody guys that's an expression that is used um in the hood and we don't really want you guys to uh slap anyone okay um, just so you know, just to be uh, just a, a disclaimer. But look at that. That's that's called tasty. That's called delicious and nutritious. Real tasty and good. Now, you move the chicken around. You don't want it to burn, guys. Move the chicken around. You want to go? Hey, Chef Claudie, quick yes. question on the uh, tomato paste. Are we watering that down at all, sir? Or is it just straight from straight from the concentrate? You can water it down just a little bit. The thing is, put little by little if you have straight tomato paste. Okay. What I did was I actually have, I had tomato concasse. I used actual tomatoes and tomato paste together. Okay. Which is my Chef Claudie kind of spin on it. But this isn't a, a quick, uh, I'm doing it fast. You guys take your time. If you have a little bit of water, guys, at home, and thank you, Josiah, for adding that, grab a, grab a little bit of warm water and add it to the mix so it starts to actually, it actually, um, you'll see the sauce start to form. My apologies. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. I'm so used to doing it, it's just kind of like, so add that water or, or chicken broth, if you have it, to the fold. That tomato paste, you're going to see it start to release because that chicken will stick to the pan if you let it, especially with that iffy. Any advice to uh, one of our viewers who said his chicken is boiling, not browning yet? Oh, yeah. Take some of the liquid out. It needs to be medium high heat and, and the liquid needs to not be in the pan. Like not, not too much liquid. That's why I didn't add the water. So that's a good observation. Whatever he did, we didn't say to add any water. We said add what? The chicken, the oil, and the iffy, right? We didn't add any. And now I'm telling you, as Josiah said to me, hey, let's, let, um, what if about the uh, tomato paste? Then I'm like, okay, add a little water to, 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 to get it to loosen up. But you're not adding water to make a broth or a sauce. So it should be medium high heat. Are you guys seeing this? Medium high heat. 
and we're browning it really nicely. That that tomato paste is gonna and that it piece is really gonna get it to go. The other side of it is this, just to be transparent. It takes um, a couple of years to do it as fast as I just did. So we are not in competition. This is a trial and error kind of thing. You're gonna do it a couple of hundred times before you get it this quickly on that first, that first hit, okay? Like I said, move it around. You don't want anything to burn. Come closer, bro. You see that? You see that fond? We call that fond. In the culinary world, we call it fond. Fond is the particles that are browning at the bottom of the pan, which we, which we need. And what we do is we loosen it up with liquid. You can add wine to it. Some people use wine to loosen it up. Some people use broth. Some people use straight up water. But this is how you get it to taste. So, so, so decadent and, and delicioso. Just make you wanna, it's just so succulent. You see it? Succulent is the right word. I like that word a lot right now. Succulent. And the best part about this is, this is, this is all the ingredients that you chopped up that you did. You see this? And so now we're gonna lower the heat just a little bit and let it come to a, a small simmer, okay? All right, there you go. And it's still browning, but we're gonna, and I want you guys to see how the, 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 the flavors are just locking in. What we're doing right now, this is locking the flavors in. This is how you, you show up to your potluck or your family's dinners. This is how you really, you, um, you just, you, you're, you're overly impressive at this point. This is when everybody's gonna take it and it's finger licking good. And um, this is the point where everybody says, oh my gosh, we need that dish again. You know what I mean? All right, give me a second guys. We're gonna let this continue to go for a little bit. I'm gonna actually grab my garnish right now while this is happening, okay? Give me one second. Oh, you can stay there, Cam. All right, now y'all. So now this is the key. Got your fresh pan and you got all the garnish that we did last, like we did over there, right? Boom. We're gonna move the chicken around one more time. Oh my gosh. This is when you sing. This is when you start dancing and singing because you see the beautifulness that God has put on this earth and you just start being happy because you know this is about to be finger licking good. Finger licking. Say it with me where you are. You say finger licking. It's about to be. If it's getting stuck to the bottom of the pan, you add a little bit more liquid right now, guys. Do not let it burn. You move it around. You add a little bit more liquid. What I'm going to do at this moment right here is I'm going to add a little bit more to if he's seasoning that I have. So 
the ending of the tomato product right here. And I'm actually gonna grab a little bit of, if you had broth, use broth. If you didn't have, you can stay over there. If you have water, use water. Just a little bit to loosen it up and make a nice little pan gravy and loosen up all the fun that's in there. Hey, Claudia, while, like yep. while you're moving, can I ask you some questions? Talk to me. So tell me about Haitian Heritage Month. What does it mean to you? Well, the best thing about Haitian Heritage Month is that a whole bunch of Haitians that are in the US and all around the world recognize just our heritage for the longest. I remember growing up, I used to get made fun of a lot for being Asian actually. It was kind of rough in Brooklyn. Um, like they would literally crack jokes cause it's like, you know, you come here and a lot of people, um, you know, they don't know the American culture. And now it's just beautiful to see so many people um, really recognizing we were, in 1804, we were actually the first independent country. We, we defeated the French. And if you look back at um, the history, especially with, um, with Toussaint Louverture um, and the, the way that they did it was so crazy unconventional. It wasn't like regular warfare to the point where, and you could check this, fact check this, the French taxed us, the French taxed Haiti because they whooped their ass, I mean, they whooped their butt so bad. That's what's so crazy about it. You know what I mean? The French was one of the premier naval, um, you know, armed forces, and the Haitian guerrilla warfare was so crazy, and the people just came together. Um, L'union fait la force. That means unity makes strength. Unity creates um, strength. That's, That's such what a it's about. Beautiful message for right now. Yes, it is. And the craziest part is it, it resonates even to today. And so for May, where Pennsylvania is going into yellow, and I've seen so many people, believe it or not, start to really come together. People I never thought would come together, white, black, whatever nationality, start to really move in one direction, because we now are starting to see the essential people are so important. The essential workers are so important. We now have seen like, all the people that you didn't want to have a certain amount of salary or a certain amount of money per hour, or all the people that that are immigrants from other countries that you were talking smack about, they are now so important. These are the people that we're relying on. So unity makes strength. Unity creates strength. And that's what it's about. And the thing I love about food, just to bring it back to food because I'm fat, is everyone has to eat. Everyone eats, everyone has, to, I don't care who you are, you gotta eat to survive. So what we're doing right now with all of us coming in on this, um, this live, this Zoom, is, is all of us are sharing a moment right now and whether you like it or not. And that's why I tell a lot of my students, a lot of my family members, I'm like, put the tablet down for a little bit or maybe put the tablet up and put a menu up where we all can actually share a moment and really love on one another and hey, you get the onions, you get the peppers, you get the tomatoes, you get the parsley. And all of us are in the kitchen talking, hey, how was your day? You get to know a little bit more about your, your significant other, your wife, your husband, your, your, your kids, your grandma, your grandpa, whoever it is, your uncle. Let's talk again. Like, let's, let's start cooking again. Let's start growing some of these herbs and these spices again. Speaking That's what which, it's about. We're, we're definitely uh, in close quarters getting to know each other well as a, as a community in isolation or with those that we cohabitate with. But um, in the community, you are doing amazing work, Claudie. You're one of many Pittsburghers that have stepped up and seen this uh, crisis for what it is and how it's amplified inequities. Speaking of uh, food security, for example, and nutrition, can you share a little bit on what you've been doing there and how people can get involved? And for anyone tuning in either on Facebook or on Zoom, this is a great time to also ask some questions of Claudie in addition to the recipe questions. Uh, and we'll be, we'll be sharing those with him. Yes, yeah, so the EAT initiative, EAT, Empowerment, Awareness, and Training. That's what the EAT stands for. Empowerment, Awareness, and Training. And what that, that is is basically we, uh, in 2015, um, a little bit earlier than that, my grandmother, Lucien Marie de Sources, who's still with us, 91 years old, just beat coronavirus. 
literally, she taught me how to cook, but she had to get her leg amputated because of diabetes. And so the strongest woman, the matriarch of our family, she, she had to get her leg amputated. I'm like, how is this so? You cook every day and it's so good. And it's rice and beans and, and rice and beans, if a lot of people don't know, it's like what they call a perfect protein. You know what I mean? Like it has all the nutrients for you. You don't even need a meat protein if you do rice and beans. So my grandmother is the queen, like literally the queen, Marie Lucien de Sources. So keep your prayers up for her. She's getting up there. And what happened is she had to get her leg amputated from the knee, from the um, right, right above the knee. So I said, you know what? We're going to start something. We've been doing cooking demonstrations with Carnegie Library, the YMCA. Shout out to Carnegie Library and the YMCA and a lot of other uh, different organizations that we've worked with around the city and around the East Coast. We've been all up and down the East Coast. Um, and we've been doing live cooking demonstrations. Through COVID-19, we've been able to switch it up and just go straight to virtual, like, like we're doing right now. And we've been able to uh, switch it over because we have a cafe, I own a cafe, Arnold's Tea. Shout out to all of our loyal supporters at Arnold's Tea. We've been through a lot this year and we love you guys for just supporting us throughout. Um, and we've been able to switch it up um, this year. And we said, hey, you know what? We're gonna go virtual. We're gonna take the, the inventory that we had at Arnold's and we're gonna literally just start doing complimentary free meals to the community. And we don't call it just vulnerable. We're not, we're gonna switch the language. We're gonna ask, actually asset frame it. Instead of talking about it like it's a liability, um, shout out to Be Me, man. Be Me has really changed my mind. Um, a lot of the Be Me brothers and um, you know my brother's keepers, shout out to my brother's keepers and Sean Dove and all those guys. Listen, we asset frame now. We don't talk about our, our communities in the inner city as a liability. We talk about them as a asset. So we're asset framing. These children, not at risk, these are our future. These, these kids are, and these senior citizens are the people that we really need to pour into and, and treat it as an asset and invest into it. And when we invest good food and time into it, you see the difference in what's happening. And that's why I love my students. I love my mentees. We are having a great time and we're learning and we're doing a skill set that can be enterprise and we can make money from it and we can love on people at the same time. Um, just, a, just a quick side note, guys. I took the chicken out of the pan, right? I took the chicken out of the pan. This is all the fun, okay? And now I'm gonna add it. Oh my gosh, there you go. Oh snap. Oh, he crazy, yep, he crazy, crazy. And then guess what I just did? Bam, all the garnish that we took, we're just gonna sprinkle it. Just a feather dusting, you like that? Just a feather dusting, we put it all on there, just like that, like that, like that. Let me see you smile, like that. Voila, 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 voila. So now we're gonna take it and put it into the oven. Y'all ready? Woo, that's hot. And bam, we put it in. And then, guess what we're doing now? Wow, look at that. This is the finished product. Come on now. That's crazy, crazy. That's crazy, crazy. Y'all know this is crazy, crazy. Come on, y'all. This is crazy, crazy. This to make you want to slap somebody because the thing about it is it's so tender and so juicy. You know what I mean, guys? Look at that. And that's the finished product. And look, you got all the juice in there too that you need. Look at that. Mind you, just so you know, for visual purposes, we still have the one we just did in there. I made that earlier. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna get the oven going. All right, guys, you can keep it in the pan. The, 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 the key about it is you can actually stew it in the pan that it's in. You don't need to put it in the oven. Don't worry about the oven. Keep it in the pan and let, let it come to a simmer. Add all of the um, garnish to it. You don't necessarily need to put it in the oven. I put it in the oven because I want to talk to you guys right now and we needed to have a finished um, product. So now that you guys are cooking your chicken, leave it in the pan, add your garnish, and then let it come up to a low medium 
we were at high medium, medium high, low medium, let it come to a little simmer in that pan and then cover it tightly with the lid or a piece of foil paper if you don't have a lid to your pan. That's the key. All right, so back to you, Betty. Talk to me about, um, uh, well, actually I could go into what you were asking me about. Um, yeah, the EAT initiative. Um, so we're here now. We, we moved locations from Arnold Street, which was on East Ohio Street. Um, shout out to East Ohio Street. We had a lot of challenges with that community, but it is what it is, you know what I mean? Um, but now we're um, here at the EIC, Energy Innovation Center, where we feel really, really welcome and we are excited to be here. We are um, in a beautiful kitchen. Give them a, give them a look, give them a, give them a view. And the best part about that is we have a state-of-the-art kitchen. We're doing a lot of our cooking lessons. We're teaching surf safe certifications. We're uh, teaching how to cook, obviously. Um, and with COVID-19, it's interesting because we have to up our game when it comes to cleanliness. Look how clean and look how crazy this kitchen is. Um, we have to up our game when it comes to cleaning, um, up our game when it comes to really like um, catering to people. So we're doing a lot of contactless um, uh, revenue services. So we're doing catering, holla at us if you need catering. Um, we're doing um, drop off and pick up complimentary meals. But we're also doing, if you have a family that you know that is in need, just give us a, a buzz. Give us a call um, on the EAT initiative hotline. It's 412 599, excuse me, 412 499 5599. And thank um, say it again. Thank you, Claudia. No, no, I was gonna just uh, thank you for all of that, for sharing the important work that you're doing and how folks can connect with you. Um, we're just over six o'clock here, so we're gonna wrap up. Uh, <laughs> I tried, I tried, Betty, yeah. I really tried. I, I'm like sweating here. I wasn't even, thankfully <laughs> I had a sous chef. So let me show you what ours looks like. Can you let see me ours? see, let me see. Can you see that? Let me see, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. <laughs> uh, not quite as marinated as yours, but uh, we tried to keep up. Uh, we will definitely be re-watching here. And <laughs> everyone, please uh, take photos of your process. Hopefully uh, there, there wasn't too much shouting in the kitchen trying to keep up with, with Cloudy. Uh, but we are so appreciative of Pump and the partnership today. And again, this is part of our Building Back Better series. Claudia, you're the first one up. We have many more programs coming and we'll be sending resources to everyone who plugged in um, on how to get involved, how to connect with Claudia and how to uh, continue to build a more globally minded community in our region. Thank you so much, Betty, for having me. Don't forget Pray, Hustle, Repeat. Love it. You know what I mean? Like we really believe in this Pray, Hustle, Repeat. And also thank you to my team. Thank you to everybody that tuned in. Thank you to World Affairs. Thank you to uh, Pump. Um, tune in again, man. I would love to do this again. Thank I appreciate you. you guys. Thank you so much for having Stay me. Stay safe and connected, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.